You might reckon him as the angriest footballer to ever grace the sport, but Roy Keane's unusual personality away from football makes you wonder how someone is capable of living a double life. This is the secret lifestyle of Roy Keane. Roy Maurice Keane was born on the 10th of August 1971 in the Mayfield suburb in Cork City, Ireland. His parents Maurice and Marie were working class people who had to undertake several blue collar jobs in order to look after five children, with Keane being the fourth. His family was into football and his relatives had played for junior clubs in the city. Roy supported Spurs and Celtic as a young kid. His idols were Arsenal legend Liam Brady and Spurs legend Glenn Hoddle. Keane attended the Mayfield Community Primary School, but he was far from the best lad at school, often recording poor results. When he was 9, Keane already was into boxing and we could joke about the career he could have had due to his demeanor. He had some success in the sport, winning all four fights at the Irish Kids Amateur Championship. However, football was his first love and he kept on playing with Rockman Academy. Keane would be dismissed from the Ireland schoolboys squad for being too small and he had failed trials with many other clubs at Dublin and a number of English clubs. On the verge of giving up on his dreams, he took on menial jobs, lugging beer barrels, stripping acid off metal plates, and cycling 15 miles to pick potatoes and he did all these just to make ends meet. To worsen things, Keane failed his intermediate certificate school examination, dropped out of school, and kept on pushing for more trials. He finally got a chance with the Irish under 15 team, alongside four of his friends. They all got accepted except him, and he later found out that it was due to his temperament. At 18, the Irishman's breakthrough finally came and he signed with Cove Ramblers, a semi-professional Irish club. After seemingly unending rejections, Keane finally had a breakthrough when a Nottingham Forest scout found him and his career finally started to take shape. Roy made over 150 appearances for Nottingham Forest and his time at the club was filled with highs and lows. The first division team had impressive runs to the FA and League Cup finals in 1991 and 1992 but ultimately lost both. One time his coach was mad at him for making a costly error and punched him in the face. Forrest was in a relegation battle, which they finally lost, but by then, Keane's performances had attracted the interest of top clubs in England, and he had a clause that allowed him to leave the club upon relegation. A mistake in the paperwork prevented Keane from joining Blackburn Rovers for four million pounds. So Sir Alex Ferguson seized the opportunity to snatch the Irishman to Manchester United. Over the next 13 seasons, the Manchester United legend made 480 appearances and scored over half a century of goals. But more importantly, he won seven Premier League trophies, four FA Cups, and the Champions League in 1999, when United became the first English club to do the treble with Keane as captain. The Irishman was a brute force of nature in the midfield. He was powerful, competitive, and hard tackling which often led to cards and physical confrontation. A dominant and consistent presence, his work rate as a box-to-box -box or holding midfielder was second to none. Despite his relatively small frame, Keane's strong character was a major influence in the dressing room. Nevertheless, physical decline, injuries, and a fallout with his manager saw him leave the club unceremoniously at the end of 2005. He spent only six months at Scottish Premier League side Celtic before announcing his retirement. Keane also made 67 appearances for the Irish national team, but he was often involved in fallouts with the manager and the Football Association of Ireland. After hanging up his boots, Keane launched his managerial career at Sunderland, and he helped transform the club from being relegation threatened to winning the championship and earning Premier League promotion in the 2006 and 2007 season. But he resigned from his role after two and a half years with the club due to irreconcilable differences with the club's chairman. Red Devils legend was appointed as manager of Ipswich Town, but his time with the club was mediocre at best and he was dismissed after 21 months. He then became assistant manager for the Irish national team from 2013 to 2018 before being assistant manager for Nottingham Forest for a few months. Since then, he's been a pundit and a regular presence at Sky Sports. Now that we know what Roy's been up to in his career, let's now move over to the other side of things. Keane is married to Teresa Doyle, whom he started dating in 1992. Teresa was a dental assistant when the pair met at a nightclub. Their first meeting was quite forgettable as she turned the football legend down. Nottingham-born Beauty was in a relationship at the time and 
she wasn't interested in Keen. Fortunately for the Irishman, Teresa broke up with her boyfriend soon after and they got together. Keen and Teresa dated for five years before tying the knot in a secret wedding around his childhood neighboring in 1997. The couple has five children, Shannon, Cara, Aiden, Leah, and Alana, and have remained married for more than 25 years. Their first child and daughter, Shannon, is a professional artist, while Cara is a teacher and a member of the Chartered College of Teaching. Their only son, Aiden, has a short temper just like his dad. Although he looks tough and hard on the outside, home and family remain the priority for Keen. The pundit, just like his wife, prefers to live a quiet life and rarely discusses anything about his loved ones. They both prefer not to use social media, so it was quite surprising when Roy joined Instagram in 2021. However, it didn't last long as he eventually quit several months after. However, the football legend hasn't always had this quiet lifestyle. Outside of football, Keen loves rugby and regularly attended matches. Back in the day, he lived a glamorous life requiring expensive houses and fast cars, partying and drinking a lot. When Manchester United won the treble, he bought himself an Aston Martin DB7 Vantage worth $36,000 a car which was one of the most expensive back in the day, and it makes you wonder what kind of properties he has. Keen is a lover of beautiful homes and doesn't mind being a house nomad. When he joined the Red Devils, he lived in Bowdoin in a modern four-bedroom house before moving to Hale to occupy a mock Tudor mansion. By 2009, he had purchased a home near Ipswich's training ground before eventually settling in Woodbridge. He moved out of the property in 2015 and currently lives in a 9,500 square foot property in Cheshire. Very recently, he also bought an apartment worth almost 6 million euros in Lansdowne Place, which is a luxury development area of the former Berkeley Court and Jury's Hotels, and the most expensive apartment development area in the country. We know that Keen has an 80,000 pound Range Rover, which once got stuck at a car wash. Keen has a tattoo of his kids on his right arm, but his wife was excluded because he once believed that his kids would always be his kids, but not his wife. I bet she didn't take that lightly. Keen earned £250,000 per year at Nottingham. At Man United, his wages skyrocketed to £52,000 per week from 1999 to 2001, and £90,000 weekly from 2001 to 2003, making him the highest paid Premier League player at that time. Keen earned about €700,000 annually for the five years he spent as assistant manager for the Irish national team. Keen's salary as a pundit is unknown, but it is likely around €300,000. Putting it all together, we could estimate his net worth to be at least $25 million and as high as $40 million. Keen and controversies are a marriage made in heaven. From refusing to play for Ireland to criticisms and rants on several teammates to cynical tackles and career-ending injuries on the likes of Alfie Holland, the feud with Sir Alex Ferguson, Mick McCarthy, and so on, he was even once arrested just after Manchester United won the league in 1999. Keen hasn't done much to repair burned bridges. If anything, his autobiography shows that he doesn't care what others think about him. Despite the controversy surrounding his legacy, Keen is very much involved in charity work, often visiting local kids at hospitals and publicly supporting the Irish guide dogs for the blind. Do you know that when he was 18, with his career not making much progress, Keen wrote more than 92 letters to English clubs in the top division? It tells you the kind of person the Manchester United legend is. But despite his hardened demeanor, Keen cried a lot when his Labrador retriever named Triggs died in 2012. She was once football's most famous dog. 